Hello everyone and coming up on Ann Arbor tonight we have a great show for you this evening. The wonderful o Olivia Hernandez of the Encore Theater in Dexter. We have the wonderful Something to Do Comedy Night. We have Tony Klee and Justin J. Dub Worthington. We have the wonderful Lucas Hopkins for your musical entertainment and the comic star Melanie Hearn everybody in the house. Great show for you tonight. Gotta love Ann Arbor tonight. Yeah, interesting show. You know, the University of Michigan just expanded Michigan Stadium to seat all of Michigan. That's amazing. You know, yeah. It's supposed to be the biggest stadium in the country anyway. Why not? Yeah. You know, it's interesting, uh, folks. I was in uh, downtown Ann Arbor, and I spoke with a local real estate agent. And, you know, he told me something this week that I thought was really fascinating. He said, Zach, of course we have affordable housing in Ann Arbor. It's called Ypsilanti. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, anybody know about what's unique about Ann Arbor is, well, what does pot and jaywalking have in common? You know, they're both celebrated in Ann Arbor, right? Everybody. Yeah, we celebrate them both. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I'm tired of waiting for service at restaurants, aren't you guys? I mean, it takes forever, you know? I mean, half the time they're waiters, and then they come up and just tell you to wait some more. I don't know. You know, but if I could eat and start a restaurant chain, I'm probably going to call it, get up and get it yourself. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, so Halloween's coming up. Uh, I like Halloween. You guys like Halloween? All right. Yeah, Halloween's great. You guys going to dress up as anything? No. Yeah, no, I'm not either. It's okay. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, but anybody know, and I believe me, I know we're past the Harry Potter jokes, right? I mean, it's kind of done, but... You know, anybody know why Harry Potter got kicked out of Hogwarts? Anybody? Well, he was caught playing with his broomstick, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, guys, don't fly off the handle. It's just a joke. You know. Hey, you know, at least you didn't say you had a Woody. No. <laughs> All right, no, we have a great show for you tonight for Ann Arbor tonight, so please stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ann Arbor tonight. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, folks. I am so excited, so excited to introduce our first feature interview guest. Please welcome the star of Anything Goes at the wonderful Encore Theater in Dexter, Miss Olivia Hernandez, everybody. Hey, Olivia. Hey. All right, how are you? Thanks for coming hey, tonight. Thank you for having me. Oh, my gosh, it's a pleasure. So, Anything Goes, the Encore Theater in Dexter. We talked a little bit before the show. Uh, why anything goes for you? Uh, because I got cast. Hey, isn't that every act? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just grateful to be in it, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I am so, so excited to do this show. Um, Golden Age Musical Theater is my absolute favorite. Uh, this is, as Thalia Schramm, our director, has been saying, it's going to be a Golden Age explosion. Mm, wonderful. Which really is just, like, so exciting to me. Um, yeah. And I've been wanting to do a role like this for a long time. Um, Reno is a sassy brassy broad is what i keep <laughs> saying to everyone sure um so that's that's why i'm super excited yeah and for those that have never been to the encore theater in dexter why come and see the show well first of all i think the encore is an incredible space um it's a it's an intimate theater it's about 120 seats um in a wonderful community dexter um and i've been so so grateful to have this theater to get to work at for the past year um and anything goes because it's a classic. It's yeah. so, so fun. Um, it's lots of tap dancing, mm -hmm. uh, lots of laughs. It's really a fun show. Uh, I'm so excited because I tend to do dramas. Oh, really? Um, yeah. I've been in so many wow. sad shows. Um, really? And so I'm just bursting at the seams to get to do something that'll just make people laugh and kind of forget their worries and have a good time. Well, and that's the, I think that's the purpose of great entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to go in, really enjoy the creative experience, really enjoy the performance that you're giving and the entire cast at the Encore and uh, be able to enjoy that. So yeah. I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful run. You know, it's interesting. You and I were talking a little bit before the show and I said, hey, do you have any funny moments that have happened to you, you know, on stage or backstage? Uh, can you share one with us? 
So I have a moment. I don't know how funny it is. It's okay. funny now. At sure. the time, it was excruciating. Right. Um, <laughs> but it was a year ago. I was okay. doing Mary Poppins, which was my first show at the Encore, and I was playing Mary Poppins. Oh, wow. And um, like any good Mary Poppins, I had this beautiful hat, a straw hat, sure. uh, with a hat pin that went through it. Sure. And I had a lot of choreography throughout the show where I had to take the hat off, put it back on. Mm -hmm. um, and this hat pin was an antique hat pin from like the early 1900s. Wow. Uh, and that's all I had heard, that it was so old and it was How authentic. How do you find an antique hat uh, pin? Our lovely uh, costume designer, Sharon, had a friend that donated it to her. Wow. Uh, and it's, it's beautiful. So yeah. uh, I had, at one point, I had to put the hat back on while I was singing a high note. Sure. And so I go to put this hat on and I put, I stuck the hat pin really aggressively through this hat and straight through my hand. Ooh, <laughs> are you serious? I, yeah, and oh so the first God. thing that went through my head, aside from like, you still have to sing, was all I've heard is this is an antique hat pin. This, <laughs> this metal has to be so old. Like, I don't know what is in this paint that is chipping <laughs> off of it. Uh, so I ran straight to the hospital and had a tetanus <laughs> shot the next day. I mean, I think it's amazing you thought about the pin and less about your hand. I, yeah. I don't know about oh. you guys. If oh, a needle <laughs> went through my hand, I would think about my hand. Yeah, the worst part was that it was through my hand. It was through this thin part of my skin. Oh. I had to rip it back out while I was on stage still singing. Oh, my god. So gosh. it was like I had to just brace myself and just like pull my hand off really quickly and yeah. uh, I still had to, I had an, a scene to do right afterwards and I didn't have time. Mm. So I was holding my hand through the next scene uh, just really tight because it hurts so badly. And at one point I stole a look down at my hand and there was a puddle of blood in my oh hand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it Jeez. was, it was Man. awful. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that show, I guess really got under your skin. No, uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, but uh, no, I was just, I think the fact that you were able to just go on, you know, I think it shows a lot about, you know, your dedication, but also many actors' dedication to the craft and to uh, just putting on a great show. And I think that's why you are in Anything Goes and, and going to be in that great show. Uh, can you, do you have any advice uh, for young performers out there uh, that want to be able to do what you're doing, you know, act professionally, uh, live their dream? Um, I would say practice, like, Practice all the time. I think if it's something that you really love and if it's something that you really truly want to get good at, mm -hmm. not even sure that you even need that advice. Sure. Um, it, it came so naturally to me as a kid to just constantly sing and constantly uh, work on characters and like be dramatic and stuff. But yeah. I think that, uh, you know, I think the other thing I would say is be you. I yeah. think there are so many people out there trying to do theater and trying to sing and be performers. And I think. The only thing that you can truly bank on being yeah. unique um, is your own personality. Mm. So um, don't try to be something else. Wonderful. Well, unless you're acting. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, even then, you have to bring yourself to it. Because, um, right. I mean, my Reno Sweeney is going to be completely different than somebody else's, but mm -hmm. hopefully everyone likes mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, so do you, well, that's an interesting point. I mean, do you see, like, do you put bits of yourself in oh, characters absolutely. that you play? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, I think, one of the reasons I'm really excited to play this part. Um, she's unapologetically uh, blunt yeah. and herself, and I'm very much that way. Sure. Um, it's funny because, like, based on the roles I've played in the past and, and my voice type, um, I normally play soprano ingenue roles. Sure. And there is a role like that in this show. Hope Harcourt is a debutante and she's she sings all the pretty soprano stuff in this show. Okay. Um, and I think originally I'd kind of thought, well I could I could audition for Hope. Sure. Um, and I love that role. Uh, but this is so much more my personality and I'm so excited. And our Hope is out of this world so so talented. Is she? I'm um, sure. Yeah, Emily yeah. Haddock. She just played Joanna in Sweeney Todd. Okay. Um, and she's so so good. So I'm cool. so excited to be working with her. Wonderful. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have a great cast, uh, great run ahead of you guys. And yeah. uh, how have rehearsals been so far? Well, I've only been to two so far. Okay. <laughs> uh, tonight we're actually learning all of the um, tap choreography for Anything Goes, oh the my number gosh. Anything Goes. So. A little apprehensive, so yeah. it'll be a lot of movement tonight. Uh, but it's been really, really fun. This cast sounds incredible. Yeah, uh, I've gotten to listen to the ensemble um, learn their parts and nice. and go through the the major group numbers, and 
it's just so exciting. You know, it's something that I've been excited for now for a few months sure. and looking forward to and working towards. But mm -hmm. um, hearing everybody and like seeing it come together in the first couple days is just exhilarating. That's awesome. Well, I wish you uh, the best, and I hope you have a wonderful have a wonderful run. Thanks. And uh, have a sold out show. And please, if you get a chance, folks, uh, get a chance to visit the Encore Theater in Dexter. Uh, you can visit it uh, at the Encore Musical Theater. Uh, dot com and go see anything goes during their one their run and olivia thank you so much thank you we appreciate thanks it thanks for having me no problem folks we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back <laughs> all right folks when we come back we will have tony and justin from something to do comedy night we want everyone in ann arbor to be safe which is why Ann Arbor has a law requiring drivers to be five feet while passing bicyclists, pedestrians, or wheelchairs traveling on the road. Most traffic lanes within the city are at least 10 feet wide, so give half a lane with this space for safety's sake. This is a good way to measure how much space is required. And if it isn't safe to pass, don't. Be cautious, be patient, and most of all, be safe. everyone and welcome Dan Arbor tonight. Welcome back to Ann Arbor tonight. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I am pleased to present our first interview guest. Please welcome the wonderful Tony Klee and Justin J. Dub <laughs> Worthington of the wonderful Something to Do comedy, everybody. <laughs> yeah, guys. Hey, thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks for being on the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Hey, yeah, man. It's us. our pleasure. So, Something to Do comedy. First of all, it is something to do. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so how did that come about? Well, both Tony and I met uh, at the Heidelberg where we were, you know, I was working there at the time and nice. he came in and I'd been trying to get something to do, not specifically by the name, but right. comedy show. They yeah. need comedy. And he does comedy. He's from the area, knows all the local comedians. Eventually, we wound up working together at there, the there Heidelberg. Yeah, yeah. And so let's get something to do for the people. <laughs> I love it, man. Yeah. Well, and for you, I mean, what was it that said to you, hey, you know, Heidelberg, downtown Ann Arbor needs comedy? I mean, would, were you a comedian, you know, before? Uh, yeah, before I moved to Ann Arbor, I was in Chicago for 10 years, oh, and wow. I picked up doing stand-up and improv over there. Heck yeah. And I uh, loved it. 
when I came to this town, I didn't, you know, I had to work, right. so I didn't have the time to go see meet guys like Tony in, in the comedy clubs and everything. So, yeah. met him in the bar. It's like you do comedy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. Because yeah. you know, I mean, hey, it's it's something that brings people together. And uh, so, uh, how long has it been around? Something to do. What are we on? We're about. Uh, I think we're on our fifteenth show now. Oh there. my yeah. gosh, dude! Yeah, fifteenth show. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I've been there a couple times. Tuesday nights, nine o'clock. Right, and uh, you guys have had a great crowd up there at uh, Heidelberg Club above. It's been awesome. Yeah, we've we've had the good fortune. I think uh, both of us being bartenders help um, help our cause a lot because the industry we get we get a lot of Ann Arbor service industry peeps coming through for sure. And you know they're out there. They're talking about something to do every day. They, yeah. You know, right. so they're helping. They're helping feed our operation exactly, incredibly. Man. So well, especially when you go, man. Hey. Uh, Man, we got to find something to do. Well, I know where it is. It's right downtown. You know? Yeah. 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 You've yeah. been there a few times, you know. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of supporters, too. We actually just recently came out with some T-shirts kind of promoting yeah, our man. show. Oh, cool. No, um, yeah, you're wearing one right now. Check yeah. It out. What are you, yeah. about a medium? I am. Oh, yeah. here, that's yours. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's awesome, guys. Hey, thank you so much, Oh, man. thanks for all your support, cool. Zach. We hey, appreciate no it. Pro Absolutely. No problem, guys. Look at that. Something to do swag on Ann Arbor tonight. I love it. <laughs> Thank you guys so yeah, no much. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you. Heck yeah. I'm going to definitely rep it for sure, man. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, no, too. And I mean, what do you guys hope for moving forward Moving forward with the show? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, there's, I think that the ceiling's unlimited. We do have a great support. We do have great support from the Heidelberg. Yeah, man. You know, and it's, it's, hard. it's hard to do that. When you're running a show in a place that you work at, there's a lot of pressure. Oh, that you yeah. got to, you know... You know, you gotta you gotta hit numbers. You gotta dance, yep. and you know, so far we're hitting the numbers we need to do to keep it going. And thank goodness, thank goodness, our, you know, the Heidelberg's happy with us. And, cool man. You know, maybe eventually set up some corporate gigs or do some things up in that space that you know, paid gigs for comedians, things like that. Heck you know. yeah! And I mean, you guys have a really unique story, uh, Tony and Justin, with Boober Tours. Can you talk about that? It's the only way. <laughs> yeah, and that's right. That's right. Well, it's uh, both Tony and I have met uh, Kevin, yeah. the owner of Boober Tours, yeah. around town before we even started the comedy show. We knew this guy. Yeah. And he's just a great guy, and he's running a program, helping people out, getting them, getting them something to do on the streets, and kind of a, like a cleanup program is what he's doing. Totally, man. Uh, and we just kind of started going around. Tuesdays before the show, riding around on a boober with him. Oh, really? Yeah, Street right. The promos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, he supplies us with megaphones. He lets us scream at people oh, while we're right. going down the street. So you're literally <laughs> riding down on a boober, just like, hey, come to, you know. We got, to, yeah. we got megaphones. We ride around <laughs> through shouting. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah, we yeah. made campus. I mean, we get, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, people hear our voices. People know we're around. That's for sure. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So what's, what's the goal for... You know, moving forward uh, with something to do. Are you guys just hoping to continue to grow it at Heidelberg and and turn it into you know that Heidelberg institution? I think we both kind of agreed we want to turn it into a brand. Yeah, yeah something yeah. To, something to do that you can take anywhere. Heck you know, yeah. maybe move it to different cities, keep yeah, one man. here, and just expand. Make it you yeah, know yeah. endless possibilities. Yeah, yeah. The more locations, you got to remember Ann Arbor's its birthplace, and you know. That's right. That's uh, yeah. Everybody's looking for something to do all over the place. So. Heck, heck yeah, yeah, man! And really quick, I was really fascinated uh, about uh, your logo. Now, is that you, Tony? Who is that? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not even sure. I know it's a very popular image, maybe even on Google. Um, oh. I actually contacted a comedian that does uh, graphic design by the name of Brett Mercer, and he oh, did a oh. wonderful job. I just said, hey, man, uh, you know, uh, it's called something to do comedy night. Uh, just make sure, you know, the drink specials are on there and no puppets allowed. Yeah, no puppets allowed, right? So, yeah, 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 we just wanted to make sure that uh, pertinent information about uh, non, you know, no puppets. Heck, is, yeah, uh, you don't want any strings attached. Come on. Yeah, yeah, no <laughs> strings attached That's to this. right, that's <laughs> right. No, cool, guys. Well, thank you so much. Something to do comedy night every Tuesday night, 9 o'clock, Club Above at the Heidelberg. Please uh, be sure to stop by. Very great time. And Justin and Tony, thanks so much for being on Ann Arbor tonight. Let's have you back sometime. Huh? Thank you okay. so much. Hey, thanks thank so you, much. Man. Thanks so much, man. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. We want everyone in Ann Arbor to be safe. Which is why Ann Arbor has a law requiring drivers 
to be five feet while passing bicyclists, pedestrians, or wheelchairs traveling on the road. Most traffic lanes within the city are at least 10 feet wide, so give half a lane width of space for safety's sake. This is a good way to measure how much space is required. And if it isn't safe to pass, don't. Be cautious, be patient, and most of all, be safe. everyone and welcome Dan Arbor tonight. All right, folks, please put your hands together for the wonderful comic tonight, Miss Melanie Hearn, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ann Arbor. Appreciate you guys having me out. I had to go through rush hour traffic today. Anybody work? Anybody got a job? Okay, good, because I don't have one anymore. I got fired earlier today. I know. Don't feel bad for me, though. Here's the whole thing. I feel like if you were going to fire me, you should have did it on Tuesday, okay? That's what I feel. Don't wait all the way to the end of the week, Thursday. I got paid today, and y'all fired me after lunch, okay? Like, I feel like we need to revamp the whole work scene, okay? So I went to lunch. I went to Subway. I was feeling real good about myself, guys. They said, what do you want? I walked in with confidence. I said, let me get a turkey. Let me get a foot long. Add bacon to my macadamia nut cookies. Let me get some sun chips, raspberry icy. I spent $17 at Subway. I balled out, y'all. Just, I did. I spent $17 at Subway, okay? Just to get back to my desk and get that phone call from HR, like, hey, Mel, can you pop on down to HR? And I'm like, sure, Lori, no problem. So I walked down to HR. Everybody was looking at me like, don't talk to her, dead lady walking. You finna get fired. I was like, okay, you can't catch the fires, okay? So I walked down there. They fired me. They said, Melanie, we got to let you go. I was like, what? They was like, it's not you. It's us. It's not you at all. Now, you have been late 72 times in a 90-day span. I was like, what? But it's not you. So they let me go. They gave me the little white box. I said, you know what? I don't want no white box, Lori, because I need everybody in my business. Give me a tote bag, you know, because all I want is my peanut butter and my Joe Osteen calendars anyway. You know what I'm saying? And you ever notice when you get fired, you get petty. Like, I walked down the hallway. I said, you know what? Let me get my $7 from the birthday club because I ain't going to be here next month. I went to the black girls in the hallway. I said, let me get back all my words of encouragement and my prayers because I still got fired anyway, okay? I had a grocery list. But what I can't figure out is, why is it that your coworkers take it harder than you do, okay? They was like, oh my God, Molly, we're gonna miss your laugh. Where's your smile? Where's everything about you? I was like, Nancy, I'm gonna miss my check. Because <laughs> that occurred to you, 
I'm getting not getting paid in the next two weeks, guys. I'm also not only did I get laid off of my job, but I'm recently single as well. I know it's like a trifecta going on. So I'm single. I'm 36. Here's the thing about being single and getting older. Dating is hard. Okay, it requires a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a whole lot of alcohol. Okay. <laughs> So I decided, I said, you know what, Melanie, we're older, we need to start meeting wonderful gentlemen, you can't keep dating thugs, you can't keep having these liquor store love affairs, you see what I'm saying? Like, I went in for a whole pint of Hennessy and came out with a whole boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta stop. So I said, I'm gonna try something like, say, for like, online dating, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, anybody tried dating, online dating? Anybody? Okay, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. So I try online dating. Here's the thing. You know how they say, love don't cost a thing? That's a fucking lie, okay? It's $44.95 a month on eHarmony, okay? <laughs> so I tried eHarmony.com. It's $44.95 a month, and I had to take a test, okay? Which apparently I did not pass because I'm still single, you know? <laughs> Half of the time I'm a good girl. So I said, I'm going to try Christian Mingle, you know what I'm saying? If Jesus can't help me find a man, who can? You know what I'm saying? I said, let me get a, I said, let me get a, a Boaz and a Peter. That's a thug and a provider <laughs> at the same time. You know what I'm saying? But I said, you know what? Apparently, if you look like Jezebel and you have a crop top, they kick you out the group and you can't be on Christian Mingle no more, you know. <laughs> so I said, in this world we're in, Melanie, let's cast our net, you know. Let's, let me, let's just cast it out here. So for $19.99 a month, I tried interracialdating.com, okay. I said, for $19.99 a month, I tried interracialdating.com, okay. <laughs> now, I met a gentleman named Suge White 81. I think he followed me here, but I'm not sure, okay. It's me, Chocolate City 30, sir. Okay. So on online dating, I tried interracialdating.com. Maybe my expectations were a little too high. Like I thought I would find like a, a Bradley Cooper. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe a Thor with the cape. You know what I'm saying? Like hell, I would have took Liam Neeson. You know, I wanted to get taken. Like this man had a particular set of skills. He was a white man with good credit. You know what I'm saying? I was on one. But that's not what I found, y'all. I found Bubba, Jeffro. And Goober. <laughs> but I went out with him anyway, okay? I did. Everything was cool, though. He picked me up. You know, he did the white man thing with the Levi's and the pickup truck. You know, Chevy, not Ford, you know. It was like as soon as he opened the door, he was like a walking Chevy commercial. Like as soon as he opened the door, I just heard, like a rock. <laughs> I was strong as I can be. Like a rock. I was like, I like him. But here's the whole thing. Nobody ever told me that Goober was going to be kind of aggressive. I didn't know he was a mixed martial arts fighter, okay? So he's a little aggressive. So I thought it was a good idea to go up for a nightcap. Wrong idea, okay? Because apparently Goober thought it was a good idea to suck my titty, put me in a submission hole, and call it foreplay, okay? <laughs> he did. But the most important thing, guys, is I liked it. <laughs> But you guys have been a great crowd. Before I get out of here, I always like to leave on a very serious note. Listen, guys, I'm transracial. I'm coming out in front of all you guys, okay? That means I identify with white people on so many levels. Number one, my name is Melanie. Number two, I work at Kohl's. Number three, I have big titties and a flat ass, okay? Let me in. I know y'all gonna put me on a 90-day probationary period. I won't do nothing to embarrass y'all, okay? I'll slow my speech down. I'll say things like, excuse me, as opposed to excuse me. But most importantly, I will say ask and not ask because I know white people hate that shit. My name is Melanie Hearn. Thank you guys so much. Melanie Hearn, everybody. Hey, come on over here. All right, Melanie, have a seat. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hey, thank you how so you much doing? for being here. Thanks for having My me. My goodness. Hey, you look great. Thank Man. you. Wow, thank what so a much. smile. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, no. Funny, funny stuff. Funny stuff. And I mean, you are just huge on the Detroit comedy circuit right now. You've won some... Uh, some competitions. Which ones did you win recently? Um, I've won the Big Money Contest. That's right, Big Money. Yeah, That's I won the, the Big I Money thinking. Contest. Yep. Um, yep. Jumpstart your comedy career. I'm in yep. the L.A. comedy competition at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. Oh my gosh! Yep. So the next wow. round is November 22nd. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. One. Well, we are sending you good vibes. Thank for that, you. I need sure. them. I'm taking them. Yeah, yeah. Take, take them. Take, take them. them. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now I'm curious. Why comedy for you? I believe I was born to be a comedian. Yeah. You know, some people be like, I don't know what I wanted to do, but I really believe I was born to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. um, I was the, obviously most class uh, comedians are class clowns, mm -hmm. but it's just something that I always just, 
just had a passion for her. Like, mm -hmm. um, I grew up watching Whoopi Goldberg, yeah. Chevy Chase, National Lampoon's Vacation. Oh, I love you that. You know, all yeah. those kind of movies. Right. Um, Jumping Jack Flash, yep. Burglar, all of those. So those were my movies. Oh, yeah. And then I just found myself just always being kind of goofy and oh, I always yeah. found humor in stuff that probably wasn't funny oh. um and it kind of <laughs> just it kind of just went from there right but i would say that's that's comedy has has worked for me so yeah that's, no that's awesome and i mean what's your i mean what do you feel about the detroit comedy scene right now and of course the comedy scene uh just in michigan in general i feel like it's really really becoming quite big it's growing yeah. it, it is growing uh, i do want to shout out that our detroit comedy scene um december we are on be on kevin's heart kevin hart's Heart of the city. Are you really? So it is. It's not me, but it's five oh, comedians okay. from here. Wow. Okay. So they're going to be able to really showcase Detroit. Heck yeah. Um, and put us on the map and let the rest rest of the world know that it is funny people here in Detroit. Right. So it's small, and it's a new kind of regime going on. Sure. From you know from the old regime, but I think we're going to be able to build. So it's, it's small, but it's moving. Right. You know, we're starting to make a little noise. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And uh, they uh, they they shoot that wonderful show on Comedy Central, mm -hmm. uh, Detroiters. Have you had a chance to see it and and be involved with the show at all? Uh, I have seen it. It's very yeah. funny. I yeah. know one of the guys that um right that's actually on the show and things. Oh, like, good. You know, so they cool. pick a lot of local talent. Yeah. To help them. But Detroiters is cool. It's just like watching your old history, you know, <laughs> seeing Mel Far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so it is. It's actually accurate. It's not one of those things where, you know, they, they say that it's a part of a city, but then it doesn't really have that flavor. Um, It does, because it had Mel Far, Mr. Allen's, two for 20, you know. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen, two yeah. for 20. <laughs> so that was on there. Yeah. Um, In Coney Island. So if you oh. cover those three things, then you cover Detroit. So, you know, in here, in Coney Island, I mean, I got to tell you, I run into people all the time. There's a lot of people from actually out east that are here in Ann Arbor going mm -hmm. to school at the wonderful University of Michigan. And when I say, hey, man, let's get up to, you know, let's go to a Coney Island, grab a Coney dog. They're like, what? You know, what are you talking about? And I said, you know, a Coney dog. And they said, no, Zach, you know, like a Coney Island is a place. It's not a dog. And I said, no, no. No. You know? No. Now, you can explain, right, what a Coney Island is. It's a place where you go, right? Yeah. It's like the, the club. It's when, yeah. after the club. Before home, <laughs> something in between, so right. I won't throw up on the way home. You stop at Coney Island. <laughs> right. You know, you get you a Coney, you get you some fries. Right. Or Cheeseburger Deluxe, one or the right. other. Hey. Gotta, gotta get the Cheeseburger Deluxe. Right. You know, but Coney is the place you go so that you don't wake up with the spins in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's Coney. And then it's just um, chili fries. Yeah. I mean, it's just chili gotta fries. Have gotta have chili fries. Man. And in Detroit, you gotta, they're gonna ask you, this is how we know if you're from Detroit or not. Okay. They're going to say, do you want slice or squeeze? <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of cheese do you want, slice or squeeze? <laughs> so if you old school, you're going to go squeeze. I'm new school, I'm going slice. There we go. Slice, Got, you know. Gotta do the slice. Gotta go slice. And if you're really retro, you're going to do shredded. Okay. But that's retro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> no, so in, uh, is it hard <clears throat> being a woman and, and being a stand-up comedian? It is. Yeah? It is. Um, I, mean, it, I mean, is it? do you ever, like... Was it scary in the beginning, or you were just like, I got this? Um, no, I'm always, serious. the thing, I'm always nervous when I go on stage. Are you really? Yes, even today, even now, I'm always oh, nervous. no, don't be nervous. No, I'm always nervous when I, because one thing about comedy, one show you can kill on a Friday and right. bomb on a Saturday, you know, so you can never just get right. too cocky where you like, I got this, because right. every audience is different. You know, one joke may work here, and it's your killer joke, but you take it to another room, right. and it just falls flat. So Man. then you have to be able to regroup, hurry right. up, get it back together. So you never want to be like, oh, I got this. Now, you can be confident and right. confident in your ability and know that, okay, if I bombed, it wasn't necessarily in my ability, you know, or right. something like that. But, yeah, yeah no, nah, not, not too many times. You'll, even, like, well-known comedians, they'll, they won't say, I got this. I heard Wanda Sykes say uh, on Jimmy Fallon, she was like, I still get nervous. Because wow. you might forget a word. Right. You know, it's just anything. But, no, nah, I'm always nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I mean, you just have such a, an awesome approach uh, to writing, too. I mean, you're just extremely observational. You know, you talk about things that you know, and I think that's awesome. And I think that's what makes it funny, right, is that you are an observational person of life. 
and and you make that real and i i just think the world of you and i think that you're really going places and thank you so much for being on the show oh well thanks for having me i appreciate that no was problem nice. how, how can people uh see you online if they want to come see you melanie j comedy is my instagram okay um, melanie hearn is my facebook okay and every wednesday i am at punchline comedy club on northwestern highway in southfield michigan it's a free show free free free, free. hey free. we like free free, free. yes yeah. heck yeah so please come out it's called the jingle come out and support and Ann Arbor has its own little vibe going on too so definitely come out to these small cities because Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti will all come together and make one big comedy scene. Alright folks cool yeah we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back We want everyone in Ann Arbor to be safe which is why Ann Arbor has a law requiring drivers to be five feet while passing bicyclists, pedestrians, or wheelchairs traveling on the road. Most traffic lanes within the city are at least 10 feet wide, so give half a lane width of space for safety's sake. This is a good way to measure how much space is required. And if it isn't safe to pass, don't. Be cautious, be patient, and most of all, be safe. everyone and welcome Dan Arbor tonight. All right, folks, please put your hands together for the wonderful musical performer, Mr. Lucas Hopkins, everybody. Thank you. 
All right. Hey, great job, man. Thank great you. Great job, man. Classy stuff. You know, every time I hear saxophone, you know, I just feel like I need a cigar or like something. <laughs> Classy stuff. Great stuff. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Hey, not yeah. a problem. So you're living here in the wonderful city of Ann Arbor. You graduated from the University of Michigan. Uh, but what was it that brought you to the University of Michigan all the way? You're originally from the West Coast, right? Right, yes. Yeah. Um, so I came here to go to the music school here and to sure. study with the saxophone teacher here. Yeah. Um, so I did a graduate degree here, um, actually a post-master's degree called a specialist degree. But oh, wow. um, okay. I did an undergrad at University of Minnesota wow. and then a master's at Northwestern University. And all those schools, including Michigan, I chose them to specifically to study with the teacher there. Sure. Great. Yeah. Wow. And so may, I'm sure you get asked this a lot, but why the saxophone? Um, you know, honestly, I think it's just, I don't really remember why I chose the saxophone, <laughs> but I had the opportunity to be in band in fifth grade. Sure. And, um, you know, just, I enjoyed it and I stuck with it and mm -hmm. I, um, you know, decided to keep doing it. Sure. So. Yeah. And I mean, uh, for you, I mean, growing up, was there like a, you know, saxophone player that you really were like, you know what? Oh man, I, I hope I can just play like him at some time or have his technique. Yeah, I mean, there's a few that you know I've always looked up to. Sure. Um, you know, some like very standard jazz saxophonists like John Coltrane or yep. Charlie Parker. Yep. Um, in terms of smooth jazz, some of my favorites are Dave Cause and Dave San uh, David Sanborn. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, those are some of my favorites, I guess. Heck yeah. Well, and, you, and you play in a group, too. You're not just a solo guy. Right. Uh, what's the group called? Yeah, so I play in a group um, called the Monin Frogs. Monin and, Frogs? Are you yeah. serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, so we're a saxophone sextet. Okay. And I actually play the bass saxophone, so it's not very common. Yeah. You know, very big. Um, and we um, play a variety of repertoire, classical, jazz, pop, and we tour all over the country, really. Um, you know, um, and we've been abroad to France once, and we wow. yeah have uh, we do a lot of concert series and educational events and sure. clinics and all that all over. That is awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have to get the group on the show sometime. That'd yeah, be that'd fun. be great. Yeah, yeah. And we just came out with a CD recently, also. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, so cool, man. It's on, Wonderful. It's online and heck yeah, iTunes and Spotify and all that. Yeah, so. cool. How do we how do we check you out or the group online? Yeah, so you can find the Monin Frogs, um, themoninfrogs dot com. Okay. We also have a lot of YouTube videos. Okay. And myself, um, lucashopkins dot com. Heck yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, man. Yeah, Monin Frogs. So hop to and get that CD. <laughs> yeah. uh, or. Uh, you can go to lucashopkins.com. Lucas, great job. Thank you so much for being on the show, and thank you for being on Ann Arbor tonight. Let's have you back. Great, thank you. All right, great. Thanks so much. All right, All right folks, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ann Arbor tonight. All right, folks, that's it. Thank you so much. I want to thank you so much for joining me on Ann Arbor tonight. I want to thank our wonderful comedian, Melanie Hearn. I want to thank our wonderful musical guest, saxophonist, Lucas Hopkins. And I want to thank our wonderful, wonderful interview guest, uh, Olivia Hernandez from the Encore Musical Theater, star of Anything Goes. I'd like to thank Justin and Tony from Something to Do Comedy Night. I would like to thank Leo and Matt and Lana and Karina and Tom and everybody on the Ann Arbor Tonight crew for putting up with me tonight. Thank you so much. That has been our show, and please tune in next time.